This clip will discuss the properties of ARMA PQ processes. So let's first state a process. It starts out like an ARMA P process. We've seen that before, using lags of yt up to lag yt minus p. And then comes the error term epsilon t, and then comes the MA part, which includes lagged values of the error term up to lag q, epsilon t minus q. And so yes, this blue part here should look familiar. This is like an AR part, and the screen part at the end, this looks exactly like an MA process. We've just combined the two. Now, it's useful here to use uh, to bring that yt, the lag yt parts to the left hand side of the equation and what we then get is this bit all the lags on the left hand side and on the right hand side we have the constant and all the epsilons now let's use lag operators that will be very useful and we'll get 1 minus 5 on L all the way up to 5P L to the P times YT that's the same as the left hand side all the YT bits and then the constant and then we use lag operators on the epsilons as well all the way up to theta Q L to the Q and then all of that times epsilon T so we haven't changed anything just all of this is written in terms of lag operators now we give this whole polynomial just a short name we call that phi l okay all this parenthesis is just going to be represented short by phi l so what we call a lag polynomial and the same on the right hand side the lag polynomial for the arrow terms we call that theta l and then we can represent this armor pq process in a fairly short form it's phi L times Y T equals alpha plus theta L times epsilon T. Right, so where all of this is just new notation, or hopefully not so new. You may have seen the lag operator before. So Y T will be stationary that process if the autoregressive part is stationary. That means if that characteristic equation, which should look familiar, delivers solutions which in absolute values are smaller than one. So that's what we know anyway about the stationarity conditions of AR processes. Nothing has changed here. It turns out that the stationary armor PQ process can be represented as either an AI infinity or an MA infinity process. So to see how that works, let's state our armor PQ process. Now if we take that process and multiply both sides by the inverse of the polynomial phi L, what we get is on the left hand side yt and on the right hand side we get alpha divided by phi L or multiplied by phi L inverse. Now here in this term so let's write this down first, phi L. Now in this term there isn't any variable with time subscript, it's, it's just a constant and therefore we can replace the lag operator with just a 1. That was discussed in the little clip which introduced lag operators, a lag applied to a constant or L alpha is just the same as alpha. And then we get phi L inverse times theta L times epsilon T. So this is now a, a rather complicated product. On the right hand side we have basically the multiplication of two lag polynomials and what we get here is basically just another infinite lag and since these are lags of the epsilon t's it's going to be an infinite MA process and this little lag process here produces just lags eta s with lag operator L to the power s and the sum over all s from 0 to infinity and that times the epsilon t. So here we we'll just get 
uh, eta naught times epsilon t plus eta one times epsilon t minus one plus eta two times epsilon t minus two and so forth. Now these etas, these are basically just they result from a combination of the parameters in the Lag polynomials phi L and theta L. So now that what we see here is really an MA infinity process. We have infinite number of lags of the epsilon T's. Now if we go back to the armor PQ process and apply a different operation, let's say we multiply with theta L inverse, the inverse of the theta polynomial, the MA like polynomial, what we get is theta L inverse times phi L times yt on the left hand side and on the right hand side we get alpha divided by theta 1 so we have a 1 again replacing the L because there's only a constant in this term plus epsilon t. Now again we have on the left hand side a, a product of two lag polynomials of the inverse of one lag polynomial time another lag times another lag polynomial, this is again just the sum of many uh, coefficients. Here we call them psi s times l to the power of s times y t. So what we have here on the left hand side is y t minus psi one times y t minus one plus uh, psi. 2 times yt minus 2 and so forth and again these psi s's are a combination of the parameters in our two original lag polynomials phi l and theta l and so what we see here on the right hand side this is really just an infinite AR process because we we'll get infinite amount of lags for yt so you may ask the question, why the heck do we need these armor PQ processes? Well, in see the, the resulting coefficients, eta s or psi s, they can be quite complicated functions and they can describe very complicated autocorrelation functions or autocorrelation structures of a time series. And this is very useful if we want to describe real time series.